Hi, welcome to Art Recycle. Today we are going to draw a skeleton hand. Now this kind of resembles an x-ray. If you've ever broken a bone and gone into the doctor, you probably had an x-ray done. And your bones kind of glow in the x-ray and then your skin kind of creates this see-through kind of haze around your bones. And we're gonna look at the bones in the hand today. The hand is one of the most difficult things to draw. And a lot of artists in the past have studied bones, like Leonardo da Vinci took a very scientific approach to studying bones. Giorgio O'Keefe loved the shapes and the colors that were in bones, as well as Paul Cezanne. So we are going to study um, all the bones in the hand today. And for doctors and nurses out there, um, we're not drawing a perfectly um, correct anatomy of the hand. It's because this lesson is for fourth and fifth graders and especially though all those bones in the wrist might be a little hard. So you could definitely tie in science to this lesson. And if you want a more accurate um, anatomy of the hand, you can definitely look it up on the internet and try to draw every bone in there if you want. Um, now, if you're doing this at home, this is probably the easier version to do. I know that not everybody at home is gonna have all the supplies that I use with my fourth and fifth graders in school. And so if you wanna just do this with pencil, outline your pencil with a black tool and then use whatever drawing medium you want to color it in, it's probably gonna look more like this one. But with my students in school, I use four different drawing mediums and this lesson is also to teach kids how different drawing mediums are different and used for different things. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is a white colored pencil. The next thing we're going to jump to is a color stick. These Prismacolor pencils and color sticks have great color on black paper, as do construction paper crayons. The next thing we're going to jump to is a white charcoal pencil because we want something that smears in the bones, but something that doesn't smear a lot because these shapes are very narrow. And then the last thing is we're going to jump to chalks or chalk pastels, which smear a lot and that's to kind of create that glow around the hand. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're doing this one, you're probably gonna want black paper. If you're doing this one, just get a pencil and some white paper. All right, here we go. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand, I'm gonna spread out my fingers like this, put my fingers towards the top so that my arm is laying down here at the bottom, and then I'm going to take my white Prismacolor pencil, spread out my fingers, and I'm gonna be very careful to have the colored pencil be going straight up and down, 90 degrees to the paper or perpendicular. You don't want your pencil angled like this because if it's angled, your fingers and your arm are gonna turn out really skinny. So I actually do this quite lightly. I press down like this, make sure it's straight up and down, and I'm lightly going around my hand like this. All right, once I lift my hand off and I make sure my arm and my fingers don't look too thin, then I take my white Prismacolor pencil and I go back around my hand like this and just kind of make that line a little bolder. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the bones of the wrist. I kind of think of them as kind of like the nose on a face. You'd put in the nose first because you wanna center everything else around that. Well, it's kind of that way with your bones here. And again, we're not drawing it necessarily anatomically correctly. So I'm gonna make about eight or nine bones in here because again, I'm drawing it with fourth and fifth graders. So we're just going to kind of make up shapes. We're gonna make sure that we don't touch the side there because again, if you had an X-ray, your uh, bone would not necessarily go all the way to where your flesh is, you know? So I'm going to kind of start here, kind of where the wrist starts to go into the hand. And I'm gonna just kind of make up some shapes. You don't want them perfect squares. You don't want them perfect circles. Uh, bones just kind of have these irregular shapes, kind of, I don't know, I guess like rocks. So I'm gonna kind of space these out. I'm gonna do four going across. Again, I know there are much more than that. But again, for the age level that I'm teaching, um, this kind of seems the best way to just kind of get those bones down in the hand. If you wanna draw it more anatomically correct, you can definitely look up a diagram and try to bone, draw all the bones you see in there. And then I'm gonna do a second row, kind of fitting them together like puzzle pieces too. Um, so if I have one slanted that way, you know I'm gonna 
put one that kind of comes up like this and kind of fills that space a little bit. All right, so once I have about eight or nine bones in there, now I'm gonna move on to the metacarpal bones, which kind of shoot up to your first knuckle right there. So I'm going to start here. This bone is going to curve around that wrist bone. It's going to come in and curve in just slightly. And now I'm imagining where my first knuckle would be. It would be right about here. And it's gonna come down, curve in a little bit and back. And then I'm gonna draw the phalanges, which this phalange goes from this knuckle to this one. And then when I drew this with my students, they had a funny name for this bone at the top of each finger, this phalange. They called it the keyhole bone because <laughs> to them, it kind of looked like a keyhole, which it kind of does. And so in similar fashion, I'm going to go up each finger that way. There is one more phalange or one more bone up in each of the fingers versus the thumb here. Notice that the metacarpal bones down here, they get really close to touching. If not, they are touching. So, um, and then as they go up, up the hand, they kind of space out a little bit. And now we're down to the bones here in the arm and there seem to be two. There's one that's a little bit wider than the next one. We're going to come about halfway here. We're going to slide over like that, make a curve line. This is almost kind of like a, this bone here is almost kind of like a trapezoid shape. It kind of comes down and then it goes down like this. And then you have a slightly thinner bone here. Comes around, and comes down like that. And there's a gap between those two bones there. Okay, so now that I have this drawn with white colored pencil, I'm going to switch tools now. And I'm gonna color the background on my black paper with a color stick. So they kind of look like this and they have really nice bright color on black paper. Construction paper crayons also have really good color on black paper. Again, if you're doing this version on white paper, you could just sharpie what you do with a regular pencil and then you could just use markers to do your shadows and your coloring here in the back. So now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna color the area around the bones. All right, there we go. Now that I have the background of my bones colored in the color that I want, now I'm gonna to switch tools again. And that's because uh, Prismacolor pencil and color sticks have really nice bright color on black paper, but they don't really smear. And now I want something that does smear, but I don't want it to smear a lot because these shapes are small. So I'm switching to um, a charcoal white pencil. And what I'm gonna do is instead of coloring where the shadow would be on the bones, I'm actually coloring where the light would be the brightest on the bones. So I'm gonna choose one side for each of the bones for the white side to be on. I'm gonna choose the left. And so I'm gonna take my white charcoal pencil and I'm going to color the left half of each bone here. But then when I'm done coloring it in, I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to smear it a little bit like this. And I'm rubbing my finger in like little circles, but at the same time, I'm trying to stay inside the shape. 
and I'm gonna do that for every bone. And some of these bones that are really small, that's kind of hard to do. Um, but that red that's kind of outside of the bones should cover up where that white powder kind of goes outside of the shape. Now notice when you're smearing your white charcoal, you don't want to totally take out this nice, this nice bright white edge to the left. So just know that if you smear it too much by accident and this gets too faded, you can always take your white charcoal pencil and go back in and make that a nice bright white on the left. And now those bones actually do look more three dimensional. So now we're gonna to switch tools again. Okay, so we mentioned color sticks and color pencils don't really smear too much. This kind of smears a medium amount, the charcoal white pencil. Now I'm gonna to switch to something that smears a lot. I'm going to switch to chalk. You might have sidewalk chalk or uh, chalk pastels at home, but this is gonna create that kind of x-ray glow that goes around the hand. And I'm going to take my chalk and just kind of color a thick line and you can tell like even right now that chalk is kind of letting loose a lot of dust and that's why it's a lot more smeary than white charcoal um, and so now I'm kind of being careful with chalk whenever I use chalk to kind of watch how I control it if I get too much of that dust what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake it off see look at all that and then I'm gonna take my finger and pull this glow, whatever color you choose, away from the hand. And then, instead of trying to reach up here, because I could smear all this when I'm trying to get to there, I'm going to turn this. There we go. And there is my skeleton hand. And boys and girls, I hope you had fun learning about a little bit about the bones in the hand today and learning about different drawing mediums and how they uh, kind of create different effects. But again, if you were just doing it at home and you drew this version with just one drawing medium like markers, that works great too and it looks cool as well. So I hope you had fun with this lesson. I'll see you next time on Art Recycle. Bye.